morning guys today I woke up to 40 degree weather and just so you know yesterday was 80 degrees for me so I'm not acclimating too well I am probably going to get sick but anyways I'm gonna be trying something a little bit different today today I'm gonna see if I can make some glow-in-the-dark mushrooms these are for a creature but I don't want to give away which creature you've probably seen pieces of it already in the vlog but I just want to keep it a little bit secret because I'm really excited about this piece and I want you guys to be as well when it comes out so anyways I ordered more instamorph I like putting my stuff in glass jars um, I have instamorph and then I have glow-in-the-dark paint I'm gonna try and mix these together and see if I can get the instamorph to glow I know the best way to do this is to actually get glow powder kind of stuff but that's not what I have I currently have this and I'm gonna see if it works I don't know if the camera can pick it up but it's steaming like crazy Okay, so let's see. I think I'm going to start off with a tiny mushroom first. I just need to melt that into a big glob and then we can start moving it around and stuff. See, it kind of has these little lines and stuff, and that's the individual little balls of Instamorph kind of melding together, and those are the seams. So now it's one thing, but to get rid of it, I need to heat it up again and just kind of keep working with it until they blend together. So if you want to get a cool texture, you could just do that, and it would probably be kind of cool. But right now, I want a smooth texture. <laughs> it looks like a little marble. I'm really hoping this actually works. If not, we'll end up just painting over it, which I don't really want because um, I don't want it to turn green. I want it to just be kind of like glow in the dark. I don't want to have it like neon green. Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure how many mushrooms I'm gonna make. I know I need to at least make three for the head and then I want to make some that are gonna go on the body. Um, and then I don't know how large I want them to be. It may be a lot easier than I thought it would be. At least the sculpting should be pretty easy. So this is going to be for a custom dragon species that I'm making. I want to start making more of my own designs because I haven't done it in a while and I really want to dive into making some species and I thought it would actually be really cool. I don't know if I mentioned this before but um, I want to do some paintings of the creatures that I've created. Because my idea with the treasure dragon is that he kind of buries himself like a desert reptile and he buries himself with his treasure and stuff, so I'm not quite sure how to go about um, kind of showing that off. I just realized I forgot to add the paint to the mushroom caps that I made. <laughs> oh, I've been talking about it the whole time and I just completely forget about it. Okay, well I guess we're going to do that with this one and then I'll have to melt those ones back down. Basically, I kind of try and make a gusher, I, and then I fold the Instamorph, which is kind of hard because the paint does kind of start oozing out, but I try to like trap the paint inside of the Instamorph. I'm not sure how much I need to add to get it to be all cohesive and stuff, because I don't want it to be like patchy glow in the dark, I want it to actually like look like it's glowing in the dark, like the whole thing. Okay, so this is what I currently have. Like, I've got these little guys. I think they came out pretty good. I don't know if they glow in the dark yet. I need to, like, test them out. But yeah, I made a bunch of different sizes. There goes one. Um, this one is the smallest. <laughs> so I've got a bunch of cute little mushrooms. And I'm gonna test to see if they glow in the dark first, and then I need to figure out how they're gonna connect to the creature. Okay, guys, before I forget, I told you I'd show you the painting, so. Let me grab that. It's long and awkward, so let's see if I can get it in the shot. But yeah, it's a really long canvas. And I'm hoping you can see it, but I've got the moon dragon right here on a branch. I'm going to have fireflies kind of throughout the background, and it's kind of hunting after a firefly. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to have it all crouched down and then its tail's all the way over here, and that's going to be glowing and kind of attracting other dragonflies. So this one's going to be pretty interesting. I'm going to try and make it as realistic as possible. I'm going to try and keep it to the same style as um, 
the art doll that I made because I really like how the art doll came out so I want it to look like a more realistic version of that. And what else did I need to show you? Um, I currently have a little bit more progress done on the two dragons that I'm trying to get done for my shop. I've basically added the head to the wireframe and sewn the neck. I need to get the wings done before I continue the rest of the body, so I'm kind of putting them off for a little bit to get other things done because the wings are going to take forever. But yeah, I got these two guys kind of done. <laughs> And then this thing isn't really something I made or did or anything, it's just something kind of cool I wanted to show you. Basically, I have a few plants out on the balcony, they really need to be cleaned. Actually, the whole balcony needs to be cleaned, but I've been putting it off. But someone, some little bird, decided to give me a seed, and this was growing in one of my pots. And it's kind of hard to tell, let me see. You can kind of see the seed at the base, and basically, from looking up what the seed looks like and stuff, and by the shape of the plant, I believe this is a baby palm tree. So, I'm going to try and grow this, and I believe it is a, from looking at it, I believe it's a Mexican fan palm tree, which get very tall. So this would be really cool to get really big and stuff. So yeah, I just thought this was kind of cute. It kind of looks like Groot. Maybe I should name it. I kind of name plants, I don't know why. But yeah, I repotted that, that way it wouldn't kill the plant in the pot that it decided to grow in. And then I also brought it inside so that it wouldn't die because of the weather changes. Because it's just been going up and down, up and down all month, and I really don't know if it's big enough to handle it. <laughs> Anyways, that is the end of show and tell, put everything away, and now I need to make a pattern for one of my creatures that's going to be a video for December. I'm trying to get caught up, I think I'm roughly like three weeks caught up, and Currently, I'm working on Christmas videos now. <laughs> so I thought it would be kind of cool to do a armored polar bear. So I'm going to draw out the pattern for that, get the fabric cut out, and I might even get the sewing done for it. Okay, so I don't have a ton of white fabric. I still have a decent amount, so we're going to have to keep the bear kind of small. So I don't want to make it too small, though. I never like making small pieces. So I'm trying to think of bodies. Did any of you guys read uh, The Golden Compass when you were a kid? I love that book series. I'm going to be kind of inspired by that with making the polar bear here. I actually heard that they're going to have a TV series, which I'm really excited. The only problem is I don't have the service that it's going to be on. I want to say it's Amazon, but it could also be um, HBO. I cannot remember. I saw the ad for it a long time ago, but I really want to watch it. Because I was the one that read all three of the books from this series, and my favorite is actually the second book because it gets all kind of strange. I double check that this looks proportionate. Okay, see, I'm glad I checked the references because this won't work. This is like backwards for the bear. Okay, let's try this again. Basically, the back end needs to be nice and big, and then the front is smaller. So it's, it's, it's thick in the back. <laughs> oh yeah, that's much better. Okay, now I need to do the arms. Let's get this cut out so it's easier to use. You just kind of get in the habit of like, oh yeah, that's what an animal's body looks like. And then when you try something different, uh, you don't check the references and you're like, oh wait, it's not right at all. So yeah, I'm not quite sure yet how I want to do the armor for this. I might leave it kind of basic, but we'll see. I do know I have a little bit of scale mail. I might be able to use that with this. The nice thing about using white fabric is it's so much easier to trace around your patterns. You don't have to dig in with the markers and uh, make it super visible. Anything really shows up. I think I'll also stay away from the same uh, armor design. Keep it kind of like... Of course, I want shoulder blades, maybe some down the back and a helmet, but I don't want to have it look exactly like the armor in the movie. But yeah, I was one of those people that read the books before the thing became a movie, so I was extremely excited um, when I heard that it was coming out years and years ago. 
I also got to experience people boycotting it because of stupid reasons. <laughs> Thought that was hilarious. People handing out um, flyers uh, trying to get it banned in the area that I was living in. <laughs> but yeah, looking back, I think that's really funny that people were trying to get this banned and now they're even doing a new series about it. And for anyone that hasn't actually read the books, I won't spoil anything for you. But the second book, whenever they get to the stuff for it, has some really interesting creature designs. Um, and I'm really curious on how they're going to go about doing them. What are you doing? What do you think you're doing? <laughs> Hi, Puppers. Are you awake? Oh, hi, cutie pie. Oh, hi. Are you awake? Oh, you like that chin? Yeah, get that chin. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I'm also needing to get some more clay stuff done. I am right now making some hooves and the reason I'm making two of them is this is going to be a mythical creature that stands on two legs and has hooves. I wonder if you guys can guess what I'm making. I'll try not to like spoil it too much and show all the other clay pieces. Yeah so right now I'm adding the little back portions of the hooves because these are cloven hooves and they have the little thingies on the back. I can't remember what these are called. They're probably just more cloven bits. But um, I'm getting that done and then I'm going to move on to making the other clay pieces which you will not see because it's a surprise. But I am really excited for this piece. I've never made this creature before. They are solid clay because I want them to be heavy enough to hold the creature up since it is going to be a two-legged creature. I need to make sure that it can actually stand. But yeah, I'm going to get those put in the oven and start on the other stuff. So I was just about to call it a day and get a bunch of editing done. I've currently gotten quite a bit done on my dragonfly painting and I realized I never did all of the legs on the dragonfly. And I was like freaking out because I have like six hours of footage, I finished two hours of it. And I was like, oh no, now I need to go back and create more footage to edit. Because obviously I gotta fix this, I can't leave it like that. And so I was trying to make room on the counter to start painting and get that done real quick so I could just have the footage ready to edit. And I kind of realized something. With the layout of the wings and everything, you really don't notice the legs missing. So I think I'm good. I think I can get away with just having the four legs. Because even the little fire bit kind of covers up one of the legs. So you technically only see like three of them. So if you imagine they're kind of hidden behind the wing or something. So yeah, I was kind of freaking out, but I think I'm good. I don't think I need to do any more, which is awesome because I want to get this time lapse out for you guys. So anyways guys, I think I'm gonna call today a little bit early. I need to get a lot of editing done. Like I said, there's like four or something hours more I need to do for this. I'm basically cutting out all the points where I'm not using my brush and I'm just not in the camera or anything. That way it looks a little bit more clean when you guys watch it and then I'm speeding everything up. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.